I think I'm supposed to preach now. Okay. So, Bishop Bismarck has done all the preaching. I told him, preach everything uh, because me, I'm here. And me, I'm here. So, I'm preaching all the time. So, uh, preach everything and uh, whatever is left over, I'll come and mop up uh, so that we have the anointing service. But I believe that tonight... God will do something supernatural in our lives. An anointing service is not magic. It is a spiritual action that produces spiritual results that manifest in the natural realm. In the Old Testament, only a few people would be anointed for special work. The king, when he's been coronated, the priests sat in their office, a prophet sometimes who needed to be anointed. Because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was not generally upon all the people. The work of the Holy Spirit was limited to special people for special occasions and special assignments. But the prophet Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2, it shall come to pass in the last days that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And, and in that prophecy, God indicated that the era of just a few people anointed to do special work will be over. But we are entering the season where God's anointing and the outpouring of his spirit will be upon all flesh. Under the New Testament, anointing is not limited to only a select group. It is available to every child of God. What we do with oil, God does with his spirit. We anoint with oil, but God anoints with a spirit. The same in the Old Testament, when they poured oil on the king's head, God poured his spirit on the king. So the oil, therefore, uh, was, was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So today, as you are anointed and the oil comes upon you, you are not just receiving grease. Neither are you receiving just a, a, a physical material. What we see as oil upon your head is, is a physical action to demonstrate the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. The greater thing is not just to be anointed with oil, but to be anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you in a real way, in a tangible way, and the anointing will break every yoke. And whatever has been a hindrance, whatever has been a limitation, will be broken by the anointing. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke, not the oil. The oil, just like when we take communion, we take bread and we take wine. But it's not about bread and wine. It's about the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And Jesus says, when you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. You bring me back on the scene. And so, uh, just as happens in communion, when we have an anointing service, the Holy Spirit comes upon your life in a very special way. He lives in you, but he comes upon you to stir you up and to empower you and to cause you to do the work that he has called you to do. Tonight, there will be an impartation over your life. Tonight, there will be a release of the Spirit over your life. Tonight, there will be a release of power over your life. And God will make it real for you in the name of Jesus. We declare this evening, as we declared at the beginning, that dry bones will live again. And every dry bone in every valley will live again. Our roots will bear fruits. We will become an army. We are breaking out on every side. We are living in the overflow. 
and we create pipelines of wealth instead of buckets of wealth and we respond to God's grace and may his grace be our sufficiency and we go for the spoil and take what is ours in the name of Jesus the Lord has highly connected you there is somebody coming to meet you and that will lead you to the next phase to the next chapter of your life we are new creation we are grace filled people living a grace filled life we receive God's revival we walk in God's course and whatever God has spoken it will come to pass our feet will be healed Mephibosheth will sit at table the table that was taken away from you God is bringing you back to that same table to sit in honor to sit in dignity they sat you from the table but you will sit back at the table that is what we have heard throughout this week and may the anointing that followed all these words become our portion we started by looking at the oracle and the vision that God gave to the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 37 God showed Ezekiel the dry bones of a defeated and dead army it was a picture of the conquered nation of Israel which had been conquered by Assyria and by Babylon an army had gone into warfare and had been vanquished and for years their bones lay unburied dry bones blown by the winds of the desert scattered bone separated from bone and it represented the hopelessness of the state of Israel and God spoke to Ezekiel that I'm going to restore the nation and as a sign I give you this vision and in the vision God spoke to Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones and he said thus says the Lord God to these bones surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that I am the Lord surely says the Lord I will put breath into you I will put life into you and you shall live I will cover you with sinew and with flesh and with skin and you shall live and you would know that I am the Lord and when Ezekiel prophesied to those bones they became an army an army goes into battle and tonight we came in as dry bones but we are living as an army <laughs> the army of the Lord and I want to briefly talk about that army in battle and I'm going to talk about the first battle that Israel fought in the promised land the battle of Jericho it was the most significant battle for Israel after they had crossed the Jordan into their promised land they had to take the land the land that God had promised to their fathers a lot of preparation went into that battle Moses had started earlier when they started their journey in the wilderness and he had sent 12 spies to go out and spy out the land the 12 spies went out to the land and came back and said the land is exactly as God said it would be but we never figured that the people would be bigger than us and they said the people are bigger than us and that is to be understood because Israel had been in slavery for over 400 years and they've been oppressed for so many years so the generation that is coming out from Egypt into Israel or into the promised land were generations of slaves 
Their fathers have been slaves. Their grandfathers have been slaves. Their great grandfathers have been slaves. So they, they are a totally malnourished group. And when you have been malnourished for a long time, you become small. It's one of the reasons why, you know, Africans on the motherland are very small. And the Africans who left to America are very tall. It's just a matter of food. They have the same West African genes, but they are six feet five. They play basketball. We are very much on the ground playing soccer. Food. Have you noticed that when God prospers you, your children get taller than you? Very quickly. Because you were cracking a G. Palm kernel to chew for protein. Now your children are eating well, so they are taller. By the time they are eight years old, they are taller than you. Say, hey, hey, Junior, where are you going? It's called food. Food. <laughs> yes, food. By the time they have their grandchildren, giants have appeared in your family. Most of us are the last generation of shorties in our family. But the people of Israel who came out from Egypt were very small people because they, they have been slaves for a very long time. They don't eat well. So they've been producing short people, short people, small people, skinny people, short people. So when they went to Jericho and saw normal-sized people, they said the people are giants and we were like grasshoppers before them. So they said to Moses, we didn't know we were so disadvantaged. We didn't know we were so small. So we cannot take the land. Then two of them, Joshua and Caleb, says, no, we can do it. But the people say, shut up. Who says we can do it? So the majority, as happens in democracy, the majority won the election. But they were wrong. Because the minority, the two, they were right. Don't overinterpret it. <laughs> don't, don't push it beyond the Bible. Because some of you, your mind is going cri 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 cri. <laughs> so Joshua and Caleb were right. But they were outvoted. Their voice was shut down by the ten who had the, the day. And the whole nation says, we cannot do it. So they had to wait for 40 years. Literally around the same place. And then after 40 years, there was Joshua now as leader. And Joshua comes and says, in three days, we're going over the land. But before we do that, I'm going to send spies to and Joshua learned his lesson that majority doesn't always mean right. So Moses sent 12 and only two worked. So he says, I was one of the two that worked. So I sent only two. So he sent two spies, not 12. He didn't want to confuse himself. Pick two people who are reliable and says, go and search the land. And these two people went and they came back and said, you have no idea. The people are scared of us. The people are scared of us. Because these two spies went to the house of a woman called Rehai of a very doubtful background. And when they went to Rehab's operation, and talk to her, say, so we're we are, we are Jews, we are Israelites. That's a very dangerous thing. I mean, you're going to spy a foreign land. But Rahab says to these two spies, the whole nation is scared of you. Because 40 years ago, when you set out from the Red Sea, we heard of you. And we heard of what happened to the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And we heard of what you did to the Amorite kings. And since that time, we've been shutting the doors of Jericho because of you. 
Can you imagine even when the people were tiny and malnourished and felt they were like locusts, like grasshoppers? The Jericho people were afraid of them. It's amazing how sometimes the people you fear, fear you. But you, you, you don't have the confidence, so you underrate yourself. So now Joshua says, if the report is that the people fear us, and the reason they build this tall wall is because of us, the reason they have these big gates is because of us, then let us go and take the land because God has given us the land. Sometimes what you see as an obstacle was erected because of you. And it was erected not because you are weak, but because you are too strong. You are too powerful. You are too capable. You are too able. So now we read about Jericho. Chapter 6 of Joshua. From verse 1. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Why was it shut up? Why was Jericho shut up? None went out. None came in. Why did Jericho build walls? Because they had Israel is coming 40 years ago. They built gates. Why? Israel is coming. They shut down their gates. Israel is coming. For 40 years, they've been on the watch for these dangerous people coming from the desert. And the dangerous people said, we are grasshoppers. Sometimes I feel Africa is like the Israelites. We feel we are grasshoppers because we are small and our economies are weak and we are tiny people and we are not powerful people and we have no idea the reason why there are barriers against us is because they are afraid of us. The world is scared. Because one thing about black people, if you open the door for them and they enter, they take over. For a long time, tennis, it's all Europeans. Americans, they tennis themselves. Pa, 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 pa. And then they opened the door. Arthur Ashe got in and he took over. Then they opened the door for the women. And Serena and Venus went in and they took over. Golf used to be for them. Pium, pam, pam. We don't play golf. Then they opened and a tiger entered. And all of a sudden we're there. Because the door is shut because they are scared that if they open the door, you will take over. But I'm here to announce whether they shut the door or not. We're going to kick the door open because an army is rising from Jericho. We are taking over Jericho. We are desert boys. We've been hungry for a long time. Malnutrition, malnourished, cracking palm kennel to eat. But something inside of us is strong. And it's the Holy Spirit. We are a praying people. We are an anointed people. And God says, I'm going to cause you to possess the nations of the world. So Jericho is shut because of the Israelites. Don't be afraid when the door is shut. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. See it. It's king. And the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. All you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. You shall do six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpet. 
And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Jericho is sitting on the land that God promised Abraham 500 years earlier. Abraham had walked on that land. There was no city there. There was no Jericho there. And God said to Abraham, this is your land. This is why I took you from the air of the Chaldees. I give you this land. And to your children and your descendants after you. So that was Abraham's land. At the time God gave it to Abraham, there was no Jericho. Then the descendants of Abraham went to Egypt for 430 years. And after 430 years, whilst they were in Egypt being slaves, a people went to their land and started building on their land. But they were not there to protect their land because they were in slavery. And they leave slavery and they've been in the wilderness for another 40 years, 470 years. And all the time they are in the wilderness, people tell them, our great, great, great ancestor Abraham, he was given a land. And when we live here, we'll go to the land. That has been their dream. It's been their hope. It's been their expectation. But they leave the place of bondage and they're scared to possess the land. Tonight, Whatever God promised you that has been taking over. Maybe God said I'll make you great but it's been a long time and you haven't seen greatness. Maybe you, God said I'll heal you and it's been a long time the healing has not manifested. Maybe God said I'll bring you happiness and it's been a long time you've been very sad. But tonight is the night. And tonight we are entering into Jericho to possess that which is rightfully promised us by God. If God said it is yours, then it is yours. Somebody say, it's mine. It's the thing about Jericho is that it is the gateway to the promised land. If you don't take it, you cannot take the rest of the promised land. It is fortified. It is well defended. It has no exit and no access because its doors are shut. Israel cannot go into Jericho to fight because the door is shut. There is a wall. The only remedy for Jericho is that the wall must be removed. But how do you remove this formidable wall? And God gives them the scope of victory. He says, I've given you the city, that means the land and territory. I've given you the king, that is the people who control the systems. And I've given you the mighty men, the combatants, the people who fight. And the strategy is very simple. It's a seven day strategy. The first six days will be silent days. You're going to march, but make no noise. And on the seventh day, you're going to march six times and make no noise. But on the last march, you're going to make some noise. And when you make that noise, the walls are going to come down. I don't know about you, but I feel for 40 days, we've been marching. And we were praying, and we were interceding, and we were in our rooms praying. We were online silently. We were just talking to God. And in these days, we've been here, marching around, celebrating, worshiping. But tonight is the seventh march of the seventh day 
and tonight the walls are coming down I said tonight the walls are coming down not only for you as an individual but for your family as well and not only for your family but for your nation and not only for your nation but for your continent I don't know about you by now you know my passion is that our people will be free because it is not honorable for an African to travel anywhere in the world and people ask you questions that annoy you and ask you all kinds, why are you coming here? What are you going to do here? Where are you going to stay? How long are you staying? How much money do you have? Is it your concern? <laughs> and especially when you are in the queue with people and other people go and they say, boom, yeah, boom, boom, the entrance go. And then you go and you become an interview subject. And it's all because you are from a place that people think are inferior. And that is why in all our desire, we don't just desire only our good, but that every shame associated with a black person to our continent, to our land, to our nation, to our people must be rolled away. We must be a people of honor and a people of dignity and a people of respect. If you travel to America and, you, and your passport gets lost, nobody should suspect you. Because if an American comes here and his passport gets lost, we wouldn't think he has thrown his passport away so that he will stay in Ghana. He will report to the police. The police will believe him and the effort will be made for him to get a new passport. But we, when you lose your passport, it's a whole different game altogether. Because collective poverty can create collective damage. <laughs> so tonight, as we've always done, part of what we are doing is we are taking it for our continent and for our nation and for our people and for our family and for ourselves. Because Jericho must come down. You have an inheritance there. And you're going to take that inheritance. Somebody say, I'm taking my portion. So as we pray, as we make our prayer and declaration, we're going to make proclamations for the continent of Africa and for every nation in Africa. We're going to make proclamations for ourselves. From the 22nd of June to the 31st of July, we waited on the Lord with prayer and fasting. From the 31st of July to today, the 4th of August, we have been worshiping, hearing the word of God, declaring, making proclamations. We've received the word of the Lord. And today we stand here as the leaders and the members of the International Central Gospel Church and other brothers and sisters in Christ, and we constitute ourselves into the general assembly of Christ Jesus. And in this assembly of God's people, washed by the blood of Jesus, we invoke the word of the Lord in our midst according to the provisions of Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 to 20. I surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. By this provision in our constitution, we invoke the rights and the authority of this constitutional provision from the word of God. 
that we constituted as an assembly of Jesus Christ. We are here and we are more than two or three. We are more than 2,000. We are more than 3,000. We run into the tens of thousands. We are a legitimate assembly of the body of Christ. And by that provision, whatever we bind on earth, heaven will bind it. Whatever we lose on earth, heaven will lose it. What we say should happen, heaven will make happen. When we say should not happen, heaven will stop from happening. And so we have the power. Somebody say we have the power. We have the power to make and unmake. Our power is not ours. Our authority is not ours. I cannot do things by myself except it is in the constitution except it's a provision of scripture that when i come into this assembly and i join my faith we have lethal power that's what god was saying to israel you have to learn to work together for seven days work together in silence build your unity build your unity build your unity build don't talk don't fight don't quarrel just learn to work together learn to work together and they work together for seven days and for seven six marches on the seventh day by the final march they were a united force and whatever they bound on earth was going to be bound in heaven what they shout on earth will be shouted in heaven what they declared on earth will be declared in heaven i believe we are in that place of unity and we are going to make legislation tonight and it will be done in heaven in the name of jesus there is power in the church and the power is not ours the power belongs to jesus christ he is the head and we are the body he speaks from the head and the body implements it so we come into this agreement today and we declare by the proclamation of god by the command of the lord we prophesy to the dry bones of africa thus says the lord surely i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live i will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that i am the lord the interesting thing about ezekiel chapter 37 if you go to chapter 38 God speaks about armies that are now going to come against Israel and they've forgotten they are no longer dry bones that God has raised them into an army so in chapter 38 the nations come up but they are vanquished because the dry bones has produced an army and the army puts to flight the enemy this is not the same Africa we encountered this is a new Africa and so we declare by the word of the lord that we are risen as a people that an army is up that we are rising in spite of our difficulties in spite of our history in spite of our failures god is raising an army an army of africa we are going to take over nations we're going to break barriers markets that were denied us will be open in the name of jesus access to international markets in the name of jesus and we make this proclamation that every nation every people that have laid siege over the continent of africa to take advantage of us of our resources of our human resource of our aspects of our capacity of our economies and play games with our economies 
and play games with our future we declare every jericho that has been a scare and an intimidation the walls are coming down 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 walls in the european union are coming down walls in north america are coming down walls in china are coming down walls in russia are coming down walls in nations that have impoverished us are coming down and walls we have erected ourselves are coming down we prophesy to the nations of africa from the north to the south to the east to the west we prophesy to the land we prophesy to the rivers we prophesy to the mountains we prophesy to the valleys we prophesy to the sand we prophesy to the stones we prophesy to the animals in the land the plants in the land we prophesy to the citizens the people of the land we speak life to them dry bones live again dry bones live again dry bones live again we prophesy we prophesy that the bones will be connected we prophesy sinews we prophesy flesh we prophesy skin we prophesy breath over every african continent in the name of jesus we will not be an eyesore we will not be reproached we will not be disgraced we will not be put to shame we will not be despised and we decree an open sesame an open door to wealth owned by africans in africa wealth owned by the people our own people running industries running the train system running our ports running our farms running our our telecom industry running our shops running every productive system in the name of jesus when we hear that some business is doing well behind the business must be a Ghanaian name behind the business must be a Ghanaian name must be a Ghanaian face when we hear something big is happening behind it must be a Ghanaian in Nigeria it must be a Nigerian in Togo it must be a Togolese in Ivory Coast it must be a Ivorian in Burkina it must be a Burkinabe in Zimbabwe it must be a Zimbabwean it must be our people it must be our people we will not impoverish our people we will not disable our people we will not tie the hands of our people we free African businesses african industries african entrepreneurs in the name of jesus enough of quoting bill gates enough of quoting elon musk enough of jeff bezos we now want our kwamis and our questions and and now and knee and tobe and all of that happening in the name of jesus For this nation, for every tribe in Ghana, we speak prosperity to you. For every tribe in Ghana, from the north to the south, we speak prosperity in the regions of Ghana, the 16 regions of Ghana, all the tribes of Ghana, may they produce successful people, wealthy people, well-to-do people, in the name of Jesus. No tribe in Ghana, will be a despised tribe no tribe will be poor no group of people will be a poor people no matter where they come from we invoke divine mandate over them we will not despise our own people 
we will not insult our own people we will not destroy our own people we will not demobilize our own people we will build our people I want to see hospitals. I like Kolebu, but I don't care much about state ownership. The state is not a businessman. And we pray the largest health conglomerate will be owned by a Ghanaian. Private sector Ghanaian. The most successful universities will be private. Because one of the problems of Africa, the state is killing the citizens. But we demand freedom from the state. The Jericho of government is coming down. The Jericho of state is coming down. Private enterprise, private business, private enterprise, private business. Wealth must be in the hand of the people. We want a railway line owned by a Ghanaian consortium. We want airline owned by a Ghanaian consortium. We want housing provided by private real estate developers who own every building high-rise building accommodations owners we cannot hold back the citizens for foreigners to take our land it is a curse for you to be in your country and foreigners rule over you jericho is coming down jericho is coming down because there are people here you will own railway lines you will own ports and harbors you will own airlines you own massive real estate you will take ownership of the health industry provide good health for Ghanaians we speak life to every businessman because God from this greater works there's going to be a shift a shift a shift to the hands of the people and some of you are going to end that and whatever we declare over Ghana we declare over every African country Whatever we declare over Ghana, we declare over every African country. African government, take your hands off the people. Let the people work. Honest labor, sweat, and own wealth. Let us be able to say, this is our Jeff Bezos. This is our Bill Gates. This is our industry. These are our people. And it must happen. And from this greater works, the shift has taken place. Nobody should try to hold it because God has taken it. And God will establish his people. We make these declarations today as the assembly of the people of God. By the command of the Lord God Jehovah, we prophesy to the dry bones of Africa thus says the lord surely i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live i will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that i am the lord we send this legislation to the north the south the east and the center of the continent of africa unto Algeria and to Angola and to Benin and to Botswana and to Burkina Faso and to Burundi and to Cameroon and to Cape Verde to the Central African Republic and to Chad 
and to Democratic Republic of Congo, to the Republic of Congo, to Cote d'Ivoire, to Djibouti, to Egypt, to Equatorial Guinea, to Eswatini, to Eritrea, to Ethiopia, to Gabon, to Gambia, to Ghana, to Niger, to Guinea, to Guinea-Bissau, to Kenya, to Lesotho, to Liberia, to Libya, to Madagascar, to Malawi, to Mali, to Mauritania, to Mauritius, to Morocco, to Mozambique, to Namibia, to Niger, to Nigeria, to Reunion, to Rwanda, to Saatomi and Principe, to Senegal, to Seychelles, to Sierra Leone, to Somalia, to South Africa, to South Sudan, to Sudan, to Tanzania, to Togo, to Tunisia, to Uganda, to Zambia, to Zimbabwe. We declare, 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 Jericho is down. And in every African country, may we see a renaissance of the citizens, of the citizens, power in the hands of the citizens, power in the hands of the citizens, power in the hands of the people, wealth in the hands of the people, hardworking citizens, honest citizens, laborers, sweating. They must eat the sweat of their labor. And we declare that there will be no king that can stop this. There will be no mighty man that can stop it. And there will be no city, no land, that nation that can stop it. We declare open sesame to Africa. The walls of Jericho come down. And when the walls of Jericho came down, everybody, the Bible says, went straight into the city and took possession of the city. It's time for a new generation of Africans to run straight into your destiny. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. They are afraid of you. That's why they shut the door. Don't be afraid. They are afraid of you. That's why they shut the door. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And especially to the ladies. Don't be afraid. It's not a man's world. It's God's world. And the scripture said, and he made them male and female in his own image and god blessed them he made them male and female in his own image and god blessed them it's not a man's world it is god's world ladies it is god's world ladies it is god's world ladies it is god's world ladies, world, ladies. i'm waiting for the day that the richest person in ghana will be a woman I know the men don't like it I am biased. I have a lot of daughters I have to speak for them I'm waiting for the day that the richest woman in Ghana richest person in Ghana will be a woman that the owner of a rail line in Ghana will be a woman that the owner of an airline in Ghana will be a woman. That the owner of the biggest farm in Ghana will be a woman. Go for it, sisters! And when we come to the individual anointing, which we'll get into very soon, that is something I want you women to desire. A man doesn't have to make money to take care of you.
you cannot you cannot make you cannot make a slave woman your aim for a man to make money for you to slay him and chop his money that is the lowest level life you are for the high level you are for the high level you are for the high level you make your own money i said you make your own money and when your husband is broke you are the one who writes the check for him every lady say i make my own money it's an anointing it's an anointing it's an anointing and he made them male and female in his own image and god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion we need some rich women in the church amen we need some rich women in the church and there is a transfer coming to you women the doors are open jericho is 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 open no fear no intimidation i'm sure the men are saying pastor what are you doing the men jericho is open jericho is open jericho is open jericho is open <laughs> i'm a man too jericho is open for the man we are running out we are possessing our inheritance no fear no fear you used to be afraid have no fear the reason why they shut the door is because they are scared of you they are scared of your potential of your capacity of your ability tonight in this anointing service something will hit you like never before something will hit you like never before it will hit your head it will hit you and go to your toes of your feet the power of god is going to rest upon you in jesus names give the lord a clap everybody be seated in god's presence